So now I want to welcome to everyone, all the way from Chicago, talking about the architectural architecture of Poland, Mr. Jan Morris. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, what we call Art Deco is given the period of 1925 to 1939, which closely parallels the reborn and short-lived Polish Second Republic. The longing for independence uh, under the Soviet regime from 1945 to 1989 was masked by an interest in the history of modernism and the, or the streamlined uh, style during the same period. Poland, after 123 years of part, uh, partition and World War I, which was fought on her territories in the East, and following a defeat of the Bolshevik invasion uh, in 1920, participated in the 1925 Art Deco, uh, the Exhibition des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, gaining eighth place overall. In 1929, on the uh, 10th anniversary of independence, the city of Poznań, which had been a fair site for Imperial Germany held an all-Polish trade fair commemorating the 10th anniversary. And that one was also visited by uh, members from the Polish diaspora in North America. While wishing to enter the 1933-34 Century Progress Fair, uh, in Chicago, uh, U.S. customs costs caused the Poles to back out and uh, the local Polish community held a Polish week of hospitality. Uh, the already built Polish pavilion became the German restaurant. There was participation in the 1935 Brussels Fair, the 1937 Paris Fair, and the 1939 Fair in New York, The World of Tomorrow. The, in 1939 ended the Second Polish Republic and peace in our time, and 1945 ended Polish self-determination. The world of uh, post-1989 Europe allowed Poland to openly uh, re-examine the recent past. The first coffee table book uh, on uh, modernism, uh, modernism in Poland was published uh, print by a Professor Anna Szyratska, Art Deco w Europie i w Polsce, Art Deco in Europe and Poland, published in 1993. Okay. The first exhibit uh, on, the, on the same theme was held in Kraków in 1993, entitled Art Deco Polsce, Art Deco in Poland. Uh, the building that it was held in was the National uh, Museum, which was built in the 30s. The second fair and the uh, second exhibit and the first one organized outside of Poland was in 1999 on the 60th anniversary of the Polish Pavilion at the 1939 New York World's Fair and entitled Art Deco Poland, Designing a New Nation, held at Chicago's Polish Museum of America. Books on the topic were published. Stryjenska, who is probably better known, uh, well, is lesser known than uh, Tamara de Lampicka. However, she did uh, much more in Poland. She designed the 19, was one of the designers of the 1925 fair, uh, did uh, folk things. She did, uh, she was a, uh, she did advertising, box, uh, many things for Pol uh, Polish uh, industry. She also ended up in exile after World War II and uh, died in, uh, in Europe. Uh, another book, Second Republic, Our Pride, People, Culture, Tradition, and Play. Uh, Architecture of Independent Poland. Uh, this was an exhibit on uh, various uh, photographs taken by uh, Mr. Uh, Czesław Olszewski up on top, as you can see, who was a professional photographer for the government and did uh, photographs for uh, showing various uh, governmental projects. 
And the last one was uh, actually this year, there were two concurrent exhibits about uh, Tamara de Lempitska. And uh, if anybody's interested in Lempitska, I do have a copy of the catalog. Okay, uh, fortunately, the competition from mid-century modern that is endangering interest in Art Deco in the West is not, a, uh, is not as prevalent in uh, Poland. While we talk about mid-century modern and images of, West, uh, of uh, Palm Springs, Frank Sinatra, and uh, cocktail glasses, or martini glasses. In Eastern Europe, it's Stalin, the secret police, and some of the second rank uh, vassals who were running the various East European countries for, uh, for the Soviet Union. Uh, so that's beginning to change as people look back fondly on the 70s and 80s, but definitely nobody looks back fondly on the 50s and 60s. However, uh, exhibits uh, are dismantled after a period, catalogs are not reprinted, specific artists and styles can uh, be lost in some of the mega art museums uh, that uh, show everything from ancient Assyrians to zoot suitors, and congresses and conferences are restricted to the initi initiated. How do we spread the gospel of Art Deco to the next generation? In the summertime of 2010, 26 tourists from the West, four from Australia, six from Canada, and 16 from the States, and about half of them being Art Deco devotees who had gone to at least one conference, at one Congress, and some of them were even Congress uh, organizers. Uh, the port city of Gdynia, built in 1923 on the site of a fishing village as Poland's window to the world, was our first stop. We visited the city of Gdynia Museum that had quite a few exhibits on the city featuring the architecture and style of the pre-war city. Uh, with two film festivals, a pop music concert venue, magnet for people going to, the, uh, to vacation by the seashore, Gdynia is enough of a tourist draw that they do not have to rely solely on their Art Deco heritage. The city conservator had uh, joined the DACOMO, which I guess is an architectural uh, society that sponsors uh, lectures, and the city itself sponsored a series of biannual event, even-numbered conferences under the title Modernism in Gdynia, Modernism in Europe, Modernism in Gdynia, Modernism in Europe. Our one stop after visiting uh, the capital Warsaw, the, the industrial city of Katowice and Kraków, the culture and royal capital of Poland, was Stalowa Wola. And uh, Stalowa Wola, was, uh, it was the second largest investment of interwar Poland, Gdynia being the first. It was to be Poland's defense industry center, far enough from the German bombers of the early 1930s, and also a project akin to the large governmental projects in other countries, like the TVA, to employ people and modernize a provincial backwater. Both the Germans and the Soviets spared the town and employed the infrastructure for their own war aims. While Gdynia, in some aspects, looks like Miami Beach without the palm trees, Stalova Vola is a bit different. It's an industrial town, so there's no picture postcards to uh, draw you there. The, uh, re uh, the regional museum placed its Art Deco rooms in the former bomb shelter of the Hotel Hutnik, furnace worker uh, hotel, the regional museum decided to compete with Płock by organizing its own Art Deco uh, conferences and foster Art Deco exhibits. Uh, one of the things I like what they're trying to do is entice young people to come visit. And let's see if this will work. Yeah, no. All right. Uh, basically, what happens is kind of an interesting thing to get people. 
Black and white scene, as you can see, I said that the city was industrial, not very uh, photogenic. Uh, elegantly dressed woman comes out and then starts talking about the period of the 1930s, why the town was built, that it was, uh, as I said, the things about the industrialization, and also talks about how things that we, that you kids, basically, I mean, she's addressing it to younger people, uh, that you take for granted now came about in the 20s and 30s. So giving that direct link, and so she'll talk about you know, sports, activities, things that we do now, because, you know, 100 years before that, you, you know, there was no leisure time. So the fact that you got work and people were able to come in, it made it uh, much more leisurely, and, and so she brings it in. Of course, she says, and you took pictures of your leisure time activity just, just the way you do now, except on, on, a, on a different medium, not cameras, but on that. So it was a very uh, interesting way. And then she just calmly walks back and away. So the, uh, no, now we can't do it. There we go. Uh, so they had, uh, it was the site of the Polish aircraft industry, both civilian and military. There's a model of a bomber. Uh, they showed uh, the theater, uh, theater that uh, movies were popular entertainment. Uh, elegantly dressed people, uh, a lot of uh, uh, things available for uh, storing. So this was in the Art Deco style. Uh, toys. All right, let's see if this one will work by any chance. No, it's a chemist. And what he does is he comes, he turns around and he introduces himself and says, uh, one of the things we've been doing is making... Uh, Okay, no, it's not there, and... Okay, but that's that, that, that's that. So the chemist turns around and says, we're making rubber from potatoes. But basically, you know, using... Uh, so Poland was one of only four countries that did not uh, import raw rubber material to produce their tires. And during World War II, the fact that we didn't, uh, we're not dependent upon the... Uh, uh, rubber plantations that the Japanese had occupied, uh, we were able to basically you know, help win the war by producing our own, uh, our, own, our own rubber. Well, so that's the one in Stalova Vola. It's an industrial town, and the town is well, not that really interesting, except for the Art Deco uh, Museum, or the museum, actually it's the Central Industrial Region, or it's up in Polish. So if you get a chance, uh, make sure you go there. Now let's see if this will play. Okay. Okay, this is from the This is the opening of the Art Deco Museum in the city of Płock. Uh, when we went there, we saw the Art Nouveau Museum and they had one room that was opened up as um as uh, as an Art Deco thing. And they said in a couple of years we're going to be building an Art Deco Museum, and that's what they did. Uh, and we'll take a brief exploration of that. Uh, of course, there's jazz music playing. And hey, which city PLOCK, Plotsk. It's northwest of Warsaw on the way to Gdynia, which is on the coast. So uh, they got a lot of rooms uh, set up in the Art Deco style. Furniture. Art, not only Polish, but also brought over from uh, other European countries. And I'll hope I'll be able to get out of here. All right. So this is the uh, pamphlet that was given out uh, by the Art Deco Museum. Uh, that I believe is the room that we saw when we were there uh, in 2010 for uh, in the Art Nouveau Museum. So in the uh, let's. Go through the building, starting on the third floor and going, working our way down. So uh, let's see, third floor furniture exhibits. And you can see whole rooms uh, done in the Art Deco style. Third floor, third floor crafts. Statuary and crafts again. Ceramics. Now, the interesting one is the uh, bird that's on this side. Um, how many of you read the book, The uh, uh, Zookeeper's Wife? Okay, 
So you know that the zookeeper held uh, from the Germans, uh, protected a lot of Jews in the Warsaw Zoo because they had, uh, they were able to hide them in the areas. So the woman who designed or, or sculpted the bird was one of those people that the zookeeper was able to save during World War II. And uh, uh, her name was Maria Gross. And then after the war, she uh, ended up going to Palestine or then, uh, then Israel. Another more furniture. From the 20 years of independence, but... Uh, Furniture, elements of modernism, the gentleman on the back is Marconi because radios were very popular in everybody's room. So that's why they cited him. Crafts from other countries in Europe. A puzzle, various styles of the interwar period. So you have uh, uh, monumentalism, art deco, and uh, sorry, functionalism, yes. Various things, all, uh, all of them are located in various Polish cities, depending on who was uh, the uh, architect. Uh, tale of two, uh, two women artists. So we already heard about Tamara de Lampitska. I also said Strienska and the two Lampitska, Strienska and Strienska. And also two gentlemen painters, uh, Leon Kvistka, who's up on top, and Stefan Norblin. Has anybody heard of Stefan Norblin? Stefan Norblin uh, was actually, there was a book written about him. He was a Polish artist, descended from a French family that settled in Poland, and he became an artist. When uh, Poland regained its independence, he was a decorator for theaters did poster art. The first poster we saw about Gdynia, that was one of his paintings. Uh, then World War II broke out. He got out, out of uh, Poland through Romania, ended up going to Iraq, did paintings for the uh, royal family of Iraq, and then the British got him to India, and he was able to decorate some palaces of Maharajas in the Art Deco style. Then he came to the United States, and uh, well, by that time, after World War II, Art Deco was kind of on the way out. Then he found out he was getting glaucoma, losing his vision, and supposed, uh, well, committed suicide. Uh, but the, uh, the area of his interest in, uh, in Indian art, you get a chance, there is a Google Stefan Norblin in India, and you will be able to see many of uh, the palaces that he did uh, uh, decorate, and of course, just him as an artist. Again, style, furniture, big, big furniture collection. Second floor, sculpture, teams, uh, and then the instruction for the uh, kids as they're going through is look close, find out where they come from as far as the regional styles and weavings. And uh, as I said, uh, Plotsk has um, a various, uh, an Art Deco conference every couple of years. This is the cover for the invitation for the 7th Fair Congress. And they also publish a book on uh, Art Deco in both Polish and English, two separate volumes. Now, uh, the Poles are, have gotten kudos for helping the Ukrainian refugees, and uh, they've taken in over a few million. However, there's also, they have a vested interest in what's happening in, uh, uh, in the face of Russian aggression. Nearly a third of interwar Poland was located in areas which, are, uh, which now constitute Lithuania, parts of Lithuania, parts of Belarus, and Ukraine. The area suffered terrible damage during the Soviet invasion of 1939. Then, 1941, Germany attacks Russia. And then from about 1943-44, the Russians are counterattacking on their way to Berlin. So it's going over. Then what happens is the areas are transferred from Poland 
to, as I said, the three countries. And unfortunately, those countries did a little bit of ethnic cleansing, both of people and uh, culture. And of course, the Soviets did, uh, helped a little bit in that too. So the Poles are now worried about how much of the, of the, of the war is going to damage all this, uh, both Polish and Ukraine, Ukrainian heritage. Uh, so one of my appeals is that we're looking for new uh, Art Deco societies to get us to join, to join us. As I showed, there's at least three cities that, are, uh, that uh, honor their Art Deco collections uh, and infrastructure. They have conferences. They have publications. And uh, maybe we should look at uh, looking into Eastern Europe, because I know, or Central Europe, uh, Mr. Laundy was over in Hungary, and there's uh, Art Deco interest there. So I just leave it up to the uh, board uh, uh, to, to consider Eastern, uh, Central Europe. And I apologize for the uh, technical glitches, but fortunately it's not the first one we've had. We had one there. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay.